We're very pleased to have as our opening keynote, uh, uh, I was going to say Sister Margaret Barker. She feels very much like a sister in the gospel, and certainly she's a sister in the Christian faith, and uh, we're delighted she's going to join us from uh, her home in England this morning. Um, Margaret Barker is a biblical scholar, former president of Society for Old Testament Study. She's developed temple theology and is really key to I think the, in the world, uh, most known for having understood that temple theology is central to uh, both uh, Christian and uh, earlier teachings in the Bible. This uh, approach is based on Solomon's temple. For the last 10 years, she's been deciphering some of the small metal books found in Jordan, and that's what we're going to hear about this morning. She's a mother and grandmother and a retired Methodist preacher. So at this time, we welcome Margaret Parker. In 2011, the Jewish Chronicle announced that some metal books had been found in Jordan, together with other artifacts. Various stories were told as to how they had been found, where they had been found, and when. Above all, who owned them. At first, they were welcomed as ancient objects, then they were dismissed as fakes. Other items began to appear, which were obviously fakes, manufactured for the tourist market. Many metal books have been found. I have seen photos of heaps of them, literally, <clears throat> too many to account. And I have examined detailed photos of some of the pages. Most of these are too corroded to read. Some, however, are still legible and are a task for others in the future. You can see how small these are. This one is the size of one bank card. Today, I shall tell you something about one tiny lead book, not part of the original find as far as we know, and <clears throat> not made recently. The lead has been tested and although it cannot be dated precisely by the tests that were done, it was definitely not made in the last 100 years. I shall tell you about only two of its six pages. These were originally separate tablets that have been punched through and bound together. They were cast so the letters and patterns stand above the page. This means they were made in a mold and so several copies could have been made. It also means that they could not be altered without recasting the whole tablet. No extra letters could be added as is possible with an incised script. So whatever we have is the original or an exact copies. The two pages I shall describe today show a precisely drawn menorah sprouting a pair of leaves at its base. This is the picture we have at the moment, which I have called the Oracle page. <clears throat> and then the next one, a stylized B, again, the size of a bank card, which I have called the B page. Now the next picture, can we have the next picture now here? This is a slightly bigger book. It's the size of two bank cards. And I shall use one larger page from another book as an illustration. This one shows a differently shaped menorah with budding branches on either side of it and rows of crosses. They're in the lower part of the picture. When these metal books first came to light, <clears throat> their strange script and layout made no sense. They were dismissed as nonsense, perhaps magic words on talismans. And it was my friend and colleague, Dr. Samuel Zinner, who first noticed that some words were set out not in lines, but in triangles and clusters of letters and that some of the letters seem to represent more than one of the letters of the later Hebrew alphabet. This was the crucial breakthrough, and I have built on this. You can find Dr. Zinner's work, or some of it anyway, 
on the website that I shall give you at the end of this presentation. <clears throat> I, be I began my work with some words from the Jewish philosopher Ben Sirah, who was writing in Jerusalem in about 200 BCE. And he said, look out on all the works of God. All of them are in pairs, one opposite. And then the text is broken. <clears throat> I found some simple words set out in triangles and then found that their exact mirror image was also a word that made sense and formed a pair with the original word. I also discovered more of the archaic letters that represented more than one letter of the later Hebrew alphabet. In the patterns that I shall show you, nothing is random. Every word has a precise mirror image, reading the letters around the shape in exactly the same order. I shall show you 21 patterns in all, and in some cases, how they have been built up. I have also simplified them. I have so far found about 200 patterns on the Oracle page alone, and they tell a remarkable story. To anticipate my conclusions, I think they are examples of metal oracle tablets from the first temple, Solomon's temple, made by the original priest prophets after they had been driven out. The originals were probably much larger than the example I used. The tablets preserved the worldview of the older priesthood and described their current situation and hope for the future. You will notice how many of the examples I quote are from the writings of Isaiah. I have found hundreds of patterns on the Oracle page describing Adam, Eden, the Messiah, the Holy Spirit, the ascent into heaven. There is complex geometry too, clearly an earlier form of what we associate with Pythagoras. On the B page, I have found prophets living in exile east of the River Jordan. They preserved in silence <clears throat> the ancient wisdom of their people. Today, I shall show you a few patterns from both pages describing the mother in heaven, Isaiah and the prophets in exile, and their memories of the holy city Jerusalem. Some of these prophets in exile became the magi who brought gifts to the infant Jesus. Now, the original priests in the temple were metal workers. Metalworking words are used throughout the Hebrew scriptures, but often lost in translation. The usual Hebrew word for refining metal is saraf, and it was used as an image of judgment. The Lord is a refiner. And so we have, I will smelt away your dross. I will refine them as one refines silver and test them as gold is tested. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and he will purify the sons of Levi. Or here, the familiar words of the Psalms. Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. The promises of the Lord are pure, refined in a furnace on the ground. <clears throat> the promise of the Lord is refined. These are my literal translations, by the way. Isaiah saw seraphim in the temple in his call vision. But using the double letters of the lead books, these seraphim could also have been smelters. 
Seraph is spelt with the letter seen. And smelter is spelt with the letter sade. But in the oracle page script, they are the same letter. One seraph <clears throat> carried a hot coal to purify Isaiah's lips. So was he an angel smelter. We must not forget <clears throat> that Aaron, the high priest, was a metal worker who made the golden calf. Presumably, there were metal workers to make all the furnishings for the tabernacle and then for the temple. The sacred objects within the tabernacle and the temple were made of gold. The menorah, the mercy seat, <clears throat> however you're going to translate that word, caporet, all the temple utensils. The ark, the incense altar and the table of a showbread were covered with gold, not solid gold. The furnishings of the temple court outside were made of bronze, but all needed metalworking skills. <clears throat> In the future temple, said the prophet Zechariah, there would be four metalworkers, a word that can also mean silent ones or workers of magic. Silence is an important theme in these lead tablets. When the words of Zechariah were translated into Greek towards the end of the second temple period, the bilingual scribe thought that the prophet had cast his 30 shekels of silver not into the treasury or the potter's workplace, usual translations, but into a foundry in the temple. The Greek word is honuterion. He must have thought that a foundry in the temple was a reasonable translation. Let us go back now to the turbulent times of King Josiah towards the end of the 7th century BCE. Jeremiah was called as a prophet in 622 BCE, one year after King Josiah's purges began. We deduce this from the chronicler who said, in the 12th year of his reign, Josiah began to purge Jeruz Judah and Jerusalem. And then from Jeremiah's scribe who wrote, the word of the Lord came to him in the days of Josiah in the 13th year of his reign. Jeremiah's call vision was prompted then by the temple turmoil. First, he saw the branch of an almond with the word play shachev, meaning almond, and shachev, meaning I am watching. The almond branch was the sign of the true high priest, and the Lord was watching because he, the true high priest, was in danger. Now, the second call vision is less often considered than the first, but the second call vision was a boiling pot, literally a blown on pot. But this word is also used for a smith at work. And so was Jeremiah watching someone melt down metal. Was this a part of Josiah's purge? Look now at his later reflection on the purges. The Lord said to him, and I'm just reading now what you see on the screen, I have made you an assayer. 
a tester among my people. Those are two metalworking words that you may know and assay their words. The bellows blow fiercely. And this word blow is the one that's used for Jeremiah's boiling pot. The lead is consumed by the fire. In vain, the refiner refines. For the wicked are not removed. This implies that wicked people were putting something lead into the fire, but this did not destroy the wickedness. It seems that melting lead was part of Josiah's purge. Now, for a closer look at the tablets themselves. Here, you see the archaic double letters on the left and their two equivalents in the later Hebrew script on the right. You see there, <clears throat> I have given you seven examples. The top letter is an Aleph or a Yod in the later script, or both. And when looking for a word, one archaic letter can be read as either Aleph Yod, two letters, as in Aleph Yod Sheen, the word Ish, meaning a man, or they can be read in the other order as Yod Aleph, as in Yod Aleph Resh, the word Yod meaning a stream. A single letter can also be read <clears throat> as a double letter. So if you have an R, it could also be a double R. So here we have a drawing made from the menorah page. Here you see that the letters can also be written facing left or right. The letter in the red circles can be a Dalit, which is pronounced D, or a Gimel, which is pronounced G. And you see that the two on the right face one way, but the one on the left, because that writing is written sideways, actually faces the other way. And in all these diagrams, the central lamp of the menorah represents the Lord and patterns that intersect at the central lamp concern the Lord and the Messiah. I shall only show a few of those today. Now let's look at the next one. Here, the letter in the blue circles, you see there are three of them, is either an Aleph or a Yod or both. The letter in the green circles is an inverted Greek letter, Omega, which always represents the vowel O. Now on the B page, which is the other page we're looking at today, there is an additional triple letter and the two letters in circles can be a B or a Q or an R, Beitkov or Resh, which makes for some very interesting readings. Now, here you see just a square superimposed on the diagram. The oracle page is a diagram of the temple worldview. The central area is the Holy of Holies, which was, of course, a perfect cube. Above is heaven and below is the earth. The direction of the lines, <clears throat> the position of the patterns situate them within the temple world. 
This is one of the most remarkable features of these tablets. I'm going to give you now just two examples, both from Isaiah. So starting here, the red line on the left. Follow the red line upwards from the black dot. This is the word for a shoot or a branch. And it grows up from the earth into the Holy of Holies. In reverse, and you often find this with the patterns, in reverse, so coming down from the Holy of Holies, it says divine favour. The blue line is the mirror word. Upwards, it says my witness. And coming down, it is the one who knows. This tells us that the person named the branch, that is the Messiah, is also the Lord's witness. He goes into the Holy of Holies and emerges with divine knowledge and favour. And of course, Isaiah's famous words, I have made him a witness to the peoples. And the vision in Revelation 3.14, the faithful witness. Now, another example from Isaiah. Follow the red line upwards from the black dot. This word says salvation. It could also say Jesus. Follow the blue line upwards. <clears throat> this word could be either sprouts or it could be another word for branch. These lines move upward from the earth into the Holy of Holies. And we have here, in diagram form, Isaiah's let the earth open that salvation may sprout forth. But also the possible inspiration for Zechariah's song at the birth of John the Baptist to give knowledge of salvation when the dawn or branch on high shall visit us. Now, several words can be formed using double letters and the results throw light on otherwise obscure lines in the Bible. Now, this is getting a little bit more complicated. <clears throat> Follow the red line up from the black dot this says Adam. The blue line, the mirror line, says seven or oath, which in the old temple discourse meant the eternal covenant. But using another value for the first letter on the blue line, the mirror word can also be abundance or satisfaction. So this pattern shows that there was a covenant with Adam that concerned abundance. And we know elsewhere that this was the eternal covenant. Hosea knew it was linked to Adam. Like Adam, they transgressed the covenant. But this isn't mentioned in the Genesis story. So let's look at another double letter, this time uh, using two more double letters, the D stroke G and the Q stroke R. And using these, we can establish the link between the lady <clears throat> and the B. The double letters here reveal the lady of the temple, the mother in heaven. Now the name Deborah, which has both these double letters, is the key. We know her as the prophetess and judge who led her people in battle, but her name means 
the B. And the B page reveals her children as the prophets and her teaching as the honey. Now, <clears throat> changing the letters. If we change one of the double letters for its other value, Deborah, the B, becomes Gavira, the great lady, the queen mother. And we know that King Solomon's daughter-in-law, <clears throat> the queen mother of King Arza, venerated Ashrata in the temple. She must have been a royal priestess, possibly the human presence of the great lady. Now, if we change another of the double letters for its other value, Deborah becomes Dovaka, the woman who joins together. This verb is used in Genesis to describe how a man is joined to his wife. Now, these double letter links enable us to find some more of the titles of the mother in heaven. Now, this is a five sided shape. So far, I have shown you only three sided shapes but there are several with five sides and some with six. They have the same mirror imagery. Here, begin with the black dot on the right and follow it round. You're going right round clockwise. This gives Ashrata the form of the lady's name that is found in inscriptions. It means the one who shows the straight path, the one who makes you happy. Now follow the blue line in the opposite direction from top left. And this gives turtle dove of the Lord. It was the mother who spoke to Jesus at his baptism when she appeared in the sign of a dove. You remember Mark says the spirit descending upon him like a dove saying, you are my beloved son. <clears throat> and I remember well the thrill of finding this pattern, which confirmed that the shapes could be more complex than just triangles. Now, some of her titles and roles on the B page. This is just one part of this pattern. And the first letter by the black dot can be an Aleph or a Yod. And the letters can be read as faithfulness wetness, artisan, one who joins together, propitious, at the right hand, or south. You do not have to choose between them because she was all these. She was the nursing mother. She was faithful. She was the one who holds the creation together. The one who is set at the right hand of the Lord. Now we're going to build on that pattern. And here, in the same pattern, the blue line, starting with the square, says Oracle. And also, of course, the name of one of the prophets in the Book of Mormon. Ilm. She was the mother of the prophets, as we shall see. And the red line may also be a word we can reconstruct from a variant spelling in the great Isaiah scroll found at Qumran, but, and then it would mean she who brings good tidings, but I wouldn't press that. That's a, a possibility from a variant in a Qumran text. 
So let's go back now to the Oracle page. <clears throat> Notice the lines intersect at the central lamp, so we've got something about the Lord. Now, this pattern shows the mother enthroned and the woman who joins in pairs. Red and blue lines intersect at the central lamp. So this is a pattern about the Lord. Previous pattern we looked at revealed the woman who joined together. And here she reminds us of Ben Sira's observation that the works of God are all in pairs, one opposite the other, and the lady holds them together. There you see it set out. At the lower edge of the page, <clears throat> there is another characteristic pattern. Two boxes nesting within each other. Reading the purple box from the black dot outwards is the word salvation. And reading the green box from the black triangle in the other direction is the word Zion. And that is how the lead books say salvation comes out of Zion. These nesting boxes are quite um, common. Now, here we see Isaiah's words that reflect this pattern. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Shout and sing for joy woman enthroned in zion enthroned in zion this is my literal translation of the hebrew you won't find that in the english translations now this is another pattern that shows one of the mother's familiar titles the red line from the black dot going down across and then up, says virgin. But that word can also mean hidden lady or eternal lady. <clears throat> the mirror word from the black triangle is the lady who causes to know. She is the mysterious lady wisdom who appears elsewhere in the Hebrew scriptures, and here she's clearly the Virgin. I shall now show you in two stages a complex pattern about the mother positioned between heaven and the Holy of Holies. Starting from the black dot up in heaven, The red line can mean the woman who brings good news or the woman of Bosra or the woman of the sheepfold or the woman who makes flesh. This is because the second letter here can be a sheen or a seen or a sade. Now, the woman who makes flesh is my reconstruction from another word, flesh. And it would mean that the woman who bring, it would mean the woman is the one who brings into mortal form. The blue line, starting in heaven and coming downwards, says silence. This was one of the mysteries of the Holy of Holies how a heavenly being took visible and then human form and the mystery was preserved in silence now <clears throat> building on the same pattern it yields yet more words the red line starting at the black dot can be read as hidden things 
or bound up things or cast things. Something was cast, bound up and hidden. And the mirror, the mirror word is, as before, the word silence. And the line from Jeremiah that I have put here, the Lord revealed to Jeremiah great and hidden things which he had not known. There are many more patterns about the mother, very many, but I shall now show you some that describe her prophets, especially Isaiah and his circle. The ascension of Isaiah is a Christian expansion of older material compiled about 100 CE. It survives mainly in Ethiopic and describes how a group of prophets fled with Isaiah from the corruption in Jerusalem. It is usually regarded as fiction composed by the early Christians to describe their own flight from Jerusalem. I think it was a Christian reworking of an older historical account. This section that I put on the screen describes how Isaiah fled from the corruption in Jerusalem. He withdrew and dwelt on a mountain in a desert place. Micah the prophet the aged Ananias and Joel and Habakkuk and Joseph, his son, and many of the faithful who believed in the ascension into heaven withdrew and dwelt on the mountain. That's the ascension of Isaiah chapter two. The mountain is not named, <clears throat> but the other, other texts and the lead tablets show it was Mount Seir in what is now southern Jordan. Now, a characteristic of this group <clears throat> was that they practiced the mystical ascent to stand before the heavenly throne. This was also a Christian practice. John the Baptist said of Jesus, he who comes from heaven bears witness to what he has seen and heard. And St. John was told <clears throat> before he received the visions in the book of Revelation, come up hither and I will show you what must take place after this. Back now with the, <clears throat> the oracle page. And here we meet Isaiah. If you follow the red line from the black dot, at the bottom and this is the name Isaiah. The blue line gives the mirror as two words calling and then Zion or the flock and this was the prophet's call the Lord said go and say to this people now Isaiah is calling to Zion calling to the flock now <clears throat> we have another pattern for the prophets themselves and again i'm going to build in two stages the red line goes upwards from earth right into heaven up into the upper part and going upwards it says prophet in reverse coming down from heaven to earth it says he will discern. Now the mirror word here, <clears throat> the blue line, reading from the bottom, we have testimony or witness or perhaps the word warnings. And coming down from heaven, there is she will cause to know. And when we think of the warning received by Isaiah at his call, until cities lie waste without inhabitant. 
what we think of Amos's confidence, the Lord does nothing without revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Here we see that set out. <clears throat> so the B page also describes the prophets. Remember that those ringed letters can be either a B or a Q or an R. So many words are possible. The red line <clears throat> from the black triangle has this ringed letter as the second letter. And so it can be read as either prophet or pure or innocent. The blue line, the mirror line, can be he will pasture, that is care for his flock, or he will cry out. It could also be he will gush forth, which is the image used for teaching wisdom. It can also be he is alienated. Now, there are quite a lot in that little picture. Now here we have a pair of similar images. We have the same pair, prophet and then pure or innocent. But the mirror lines here are he will discern or he will lament. Now, there's more about the prophets in the patterns that describe the whole community exiled in Seir, those whom Isaiah called the faithful remnant. Now, the, <clears throat> they were living east of the Jordan, and the prophet Micah, one of Isaiah's group, described them as the flock in Bosra or the flock in the sheepfold. It's the same word. I will surely gather all of you, O Jacob. I will gather the remnant of Israel. I will set them together like sheep in a fold. And the oracle page and the B page describe them. They are here, the remnant, you see, and the blue line, my people. And then the next picture, we have the remnant or the yeast. This is written in the same way in the script of the lead books. And if we read that word in reverse, <clears throat> it becomes the head or the leader. And it is doubtless this group whom Jesus had in mind when he spoke of the woman who hid her yeast, or was it her remnant, and waited for it to transform all the dough. Now, building on the same pattern, but this time following the blue line from the black triangle at the bottom, he will return which combined with the red line remnant gives the name of Isaiah's son, Shuv. But the blue line also says he pours out or casts metal, or he will see visions, or he shapes metal. I remember that when he was about to leave Jerusalem, Isaiah said to someone, and we don't know to whom, bind up or cast the testimony, seal up the teaching. Now, <clears throat> the red line here is remnant or yeast. 
but the word here and you can get anywhere can also be song of praise but the mirror word read in either direction up or down is my sign and immediately after telling someone to cast and seal up the teaching Isaiah said behold I the children whom the Lord has given me are signs and portents in Israel from the Lord of hosts now these people were the exiled priests see this picture here the exiled priests who were the children of the mother they knew they would return with her and so the red line here from the black dot reading it round says they will draw near this is a technical term used for priestly service at the altar and in reverse the, the line says she will increase or flourish and Isaiah you will recall said you shall be called priests of the Lord in your land you shall possess a double portion that is the inheritance of the firstborn sons now remember that pattern and look at this cover of the book where I see the same pattern the cover of the larger lead book which has exactly the same pattern there are the two budding almond branches in the red boxes either sign of the menorah now doubling was a sign of importance and the almond branch was a sign of the true priesthood remember jeremiah had seen the almond branch in danger when josiah was purging the temple the tree of life represented by the menorah which is the great symbol of the mother here it is restored to the holy of holies before it stand rows of people wearing the x the diagonal cross on their foreheads they are the high priests and this is the vision at the end of the book of revelation where it says his servants shall worship him they shall see his face his name shall be on their foreheads now <clears throat> a few details about Seir where the remnant were living in exile and these are from the B page uh, the first pairs together Seir and light giver so you've got the red line saying Seir <clears throat> the blue line saying Meir the light giver and this is where the light was being kept safe Now here's another pair of patterns. In both cases, the red line joins the same set of letters and so both patterns say the same thing. From the black square, the line can be read as Seir, but that word can also mean small or insignificant can be a scapegoat sent out into the desert bearing the sins of the people which must be how the community saw themselves it could also be Shu'aib who was mentioned in the Quran as the prophet in this region possibly their name for Shia Shub Isaiah's son and in reverse the red line says crushed and the one who bears fruit now look at the mirror images of those red lines and they become light giver and exalted this is how the community saw themselves now last <clears throat> I want to show you a few of the most complex patterns which describe the corrupted city of Jerusalem in contrast with its heavenly ideal Isaiah, you recall, was in despair when he exclaimed, the faithful city has become a harlot. 
in this way of reading the texts, the system of mirror images, which we seem to have lost, it's certainly I have lost, we are thank you um <clears throat> this system of mirror images works both vertically and horizontally and so there is in effect a four-way symmetry these images are incredibly sophisticated so see the next picture <clears throat> So can we see slide 55? Now here, the red line from the black dot, read it round clockwise, that says Jerusalem. But it can be read as two words divided at the black triangle. So if you read around, it then says land of and then peace. And we remember St. Paul says the Jerusalem above is free and she is our mother. Jerusalem links heaven and earth. Now, this pattern shows the lower earthly condition that is the opposite of the heavenly city. The blue line, <clears throat> red, clockwise the, the the blue line red clockwise is the heavenly city that we've just seen the red line from the black dot red anti-clockwise so an exact reflection says deep places of distress isaiah the faithful city as a harlot and then this is the last pair of patterns and these contrast the one who dwells in the heavenly city with those of the city on earth. The red line reading anti-clockwise from the black dot says, God who sees, Eroi, Hagar's name for the Lord. And you remember the psalmist sang, the Lord's throne is in heaven, his eyes behold the children of men. And then the reflection of this, reflection of this is the earthly Jerusalem. The lower red triangle, clockwise from the black dot, says doers of filthy things. And in reverse, it says, my people is blinded. The exact opposite of the God who sees. And reading anti-clockwise from the black triangle the line says rejecting salvation so this is just a glimpse of what the lead books have revealed so far it really is just a peak who knows what is still to be discovered the first task will be to conduct more tests on the metal of these books to determine when the copies we have were made. We have results of a few tests, but more work is needed and this is expensive. We have no funding beyond occasional gifts from well -wishers. Then we need more researchers to work on the other materials. I have made this a project for my retirement when I no longer need to earn a living and I work at home. Others are in a similar position. When the lead books first came to light, there were extravagant claims in the media which prompted hostility and ridicule. This material is still online and makes it difficult for serious scholars to be heard. All this needs to be overcome if we are to find out more about the metal books. They seem to me to be evidence for a missing chapter in the story of the Hebrew people to be evidence for an exile across the Jordan that has been lost to history. 
the Magi who brought gifts to the infant Jesus show that Christian origins are to be found in this missing chapter. Remember, the book of Revelation is about opening a small sealed book, but we're not told what the book said. Thank you.